Hello, welcome to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and this is whiskey review number 67. What I have for you today is a single malt scotch whiskey from the island of Isla and that comes in the form of this. The Port Charlotte Scottish Barley from Brookladdy Distillery. That's right, there isn't a Port Charlotte Distillery, at least not anymore. It is distilled at Brookladdy. Hi mate, Winston's here as well, you can't see him. There's his tail. He is here, trust me. Um, so this is a, uh, well in fact before we go any further, you can see I've probably got two bottles, I've got a big one, in fact there's a the bottle so you can see what that looks like, uh, and there is Adam Hannett's signature right there, the, uh, the distiller that replaced Jim McEwen, and here's my little bottle which as you can see is already open. Uh, there it is, and interestingly that's got still got a Jim McEwen signature on it which is pretty cool. Now, the reason I've got two is because the big bottle I've actually got for the Ainsworth Whiskey Club, which is a new whiskey club that I set up in the village that I live in. Um, I've mentioned it a couple of times, I think, in the past that I formed, founded and ran the uh, Manchester Whiskey Club in the great city of Manchester. Um, and I ran that for, for three years uh, before I handed over to the very capable hands of the committee who are dealing with the day-to-day -day running of that and they're still running it very, very well to this day, so kudos to those guys. Um, but basically, like I said, I've decided to set up a, a Manchester Whiskey Club again, but on a smaller scale in the village that I live in up here in Lancashire. Oh, aye. Hey, up. So, I've got the little bottle. It's exactly the same spirit. Although, interestingly, this is a slightly older version, if it's got Jim McEwen's signature on it. I actually won this as a prize for a competition that Brooke Laddie were, were running on their Twitter feed and it was uh, View Out of Your Window. It's going back about a year now. More than a year. And um, basically uh, my office was being refurbed at the time. All the windows were taken out. It was, I think it was, it was going on towards winter. I'm sure it was like October, November. And instead of windows, I just had like a, you know, two centimetre thick piece of plyboard next to me, so I sent them a picture of that and they were like, they must have taken pity, they must be like, Jesus, he needs a bit of perking up. So anyway, without further ado, Brook Buddy distilled this, Port Charlotte, right. As I was saying, there is not a distillery called Port Charlotte, at least not anymore. Brook Laddy have distilled this, which is effectively a heavily peated run through the Brook Laddy stills. Now, it's peated to 40 ppm, um, which is more than the Lefroy 10, for example, which is around 30, 35. Um, now, Brookladdy have quite an emphasis and they're very proud about the terroir of their whiskey. And with, whilst, yeah, Scottish barley, fair enough. So they basically source the barley from, you know, Scot Scotland basically. You know, it's, it'll probably come from one of the larger um, malting companies that uh, a lot of distilleries use, but you know, still in Scotland, which is good. Now, what's quite unique for this release is that. They've bottled the whiskey using spring water from the Octomore field of farmer James Brown. James Brown. Um, and uh, yeah, so there you go. So they've used spring water from a farm on Isla and um, bottled at 50%. It's natural colour, it's natural filters, and uh, you know. It's nice and chunky in strength, and Winston's scratching something and destroying something that I own and love, predictably, in the background. So, nice sort of gold colour there. Uh, let's run with Joanna Lumley's earrings. Very nice indeed. Lovely. Some nice tears going down the glass there, or legs as I like to call them. Hopefully you can see those. I appreciate it. I'm actually sitting a little bit further back than I usually am. Hopefully that's, uh, that's working out okay for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's lovely. You can still see my ugly mug behind. So, let's give it a try on the nose. Hmm. I will be trying it with water as well. It's 50%. I want to see how that, that alters it. Now, quite predictably, at this strength, there is quite a bit of nose prickling going on, it's quite spiky initially, however, once you get past that, 
you've then got a really nice sort of coal smoke. Um, interestingly, and I'd say quite predictably really, there's still a lot of Brook Laddie character to this whiskey. You've still got that sort of like nice sugary barley, you've got haylage, you've got, again with that smoke, it's almost as though somebody set fire to the farm. The farm is aflame, there's chickens running around blazing. Um, you know, it's, it's not good. Um, you know, everything's on fire. Pigs, cows, you name it. Um, Old McDonald's farm will not last much longer. It's, it's really, really, really interesting. It's still got a little bit of salt in there as well, sort of salty sea air. It's quite herbal, sort of like, as well, quite mossy, like damp earth. A little bit of lemon or orange zest maybe. A little bit of vanilla, sort of cream. But overall, you've got that really nice sort of sooty smoke. You've got that really nice kind of barley, haylage, brookladdy, atypical flavours. Which is quite interesting. I mean, I say predictably it has Brook Laddie character. I don't say that in the sense that it's a predictable and boring whiskey. Far from it. It's just quite interesting to see that it's actually retained so much Brook Laddie character. A little bit of licorice in there. Hmm. Let's see what it's like on the palate. What are you doing now? Pest. Mmm. That is big. Big, big flavours. Predominantly, that smoke, that peat, it is there in abundance. And do you know what? Then it mellows out. It's still spicy. You can still see that I'm smacking my lips because it keeps on going. It's really nice, very warming. You've got barley, kind of honey cereal, vanilla cream in there again, the lemons there, I'd say that there's kind of like a smoked meat flavour in there as well, maybe like a smoked brisket or something like that, quite meaty, quite beefy, still quite herbal, a bit of rosemary maybe, dried rosemary, maybe even a little bit of thyme, something quite herbal. Finish, whilst initially the palate does go on for quite a while, the finish itself sort of starts to echo a little bit, it starts to fade off. Sweet, quite warm, still there, still a nice little bit of warmth in there. Um, and I think all the time you've still got the sort of ghost of that, that smoke, that peatiness running through it, that vein, that thick vein of peat. I do always like to go back onto a whiskey's nose after I've tasted it, just to, just to see if there's anything else that I can pick out. Because I feel, and I've, I often find that by tasting it, you know, you, you do open your nose up against sort of new sensations and new flavours. It's basically like starting again from scratch but with a new little dimension on it because you've already tried it once. What I didn't mention before, the mouthfeel is very good. Not quite as oily as you might expect from a whiskey that's been non-chill filtered and kept at 50%. But it's still very thick. Very sort of mouth coating. And I think in terms of additional flavours, probably a little bit of maybe charcoal biscuit, um, digestive biscuits as well, and brandy snap baskets. Hmm, interesting. Very good. I'm going to try it with water now. So I'll only put one in there just to show you how much I've got left. I've got that much left, so probably put. 
I'll put two I'll put two and a half in. Two and a half teaspoons in there. So there you go. Just give that a swirl. Yes, sorry, I know. I know some people do like to do that. Some people like me just do that. So I'll be honest with you, I don't find that it makes a huge amount of difference, if any, none that I can detect anyway. However, I'm not a whiskey expert, I'm not a spirits journalist, I just enjoy drinking whiskey. Um, and that's pretty much that. In terms of price, I've not mentioned that yet. You can pick this up for around 40 to 45 quid. Um, it's um, going to be available on the usual suspects, so Master of Malt, Whiskey Exchange. The good thing about this bottling, it's readily available, it's you know it's a constant release as such. It's limited to an extent because bear in mind that Brooklady aren't running peated runs too often. Um, but you know, it's here, it's not going anywhere anytime soon, I want to say. Um, you can't see it but up there on the top shelf where I keep the rest of my Brooklady, uh, because I do tend to keep my whiskies in alphabetical order in case you haven't already noticed. Um, I have a PC10, so a Port Charlotte 10. It's the latest release, the second edition, as it were. Uh, this time released as uh, Adam Hannett, as the, uh, the master distiller, and he's doing a fantastic job. I've not opened that yet, but I will be trying it at some point, and when I do, I will review it with you. Uh, I've also got the Brook Laddie 10-year-old, so the original Laddie 10, but I've also got the second edition. Again, another Adam Hannett release that came out at the same time as the PC10. Again, not open that second edition yet, but when I do, you'll be sure that you'll be the first ones to know. <sighs> right, so now I've gone yabbering on for a little while. You might notice a slight cloudiness to this now. Now, a lot of distillers, a lot of companies such as Diageo, Open Ricard, etc., like to chill filter their whiskies because they feel that people don't like to see this. I don't care, you might not care. Hello, sunshine. But you know, they, they believe that the general public do, and this is one of the reasons why they chill filter the whiskey, so you don't get this cloudiness in there. So, onto the nose, let's see what difference the water's made. Interestingly, it's become a lot, lot more citrus lead. There's still a little bit of smoke in the background, but by no means is it as prevalent. There's cinnamon cream. Now by that, I've still got the vanilla cream from the nose originally without water, but there's a massive underlying cinnamon note in there. Um, cinnamon grains, but I'm not, well, I'm not Anyway, you're right. Um, I, I wouldn't normally speak its name, but Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey, you know, imagine that kind of intense cinnamon-ness. And Winston's coming to sit in, aren't you? Hey. Um, so uh, this is Winston. Um, for those of you that have watched the Dalmore 15 review, you will notice that he enjoys getting in on whiskey reviews and uh, trashing my shelves, don't you? Yeah, that's fine, turn your back on me, whatever. Blinking me. It's still got quite that herbal quality to it as well. Uh, what I would say though is that lemon is, is really sort of playing centre stage now. Uh, don't you dare. We've been down that road and it didn't end well with it. You can, if you've not watched the Dalmore 15 review, I encourage you to watch it. Um, purely to see him jump up to the top shelf from this table. Uh, Realise that the, there is a wide array of whiskies up there. And just hearing clattering into him and just seeing him crash down to the floor. Uh, he, he wasn't hurt, and more importantly, none of my whiskies were either. So uh, it all ended well, basically. It's all fine. Whilst the smoke's there, the smoke that I'm getting now on this, if you've ever been to a firework display, or bonfire night as we call it in the UK, you know, for the 5th of November, 4th of July in America, for example, that sort of firework smoke smell after they've all gone off it's not a woody fire like smoke it's not a peaty smoke it's not a cold smoke it is it's not a struck match uh, smoke either it's not sulfurous it is it's after sort of like a firework display that's mental that is, that is awesome right on the on the palette Oh, 
All right, interesting now. Mm, it's getting sweeter as I'm talking. All right, honey, mm, honey. All right. What I'd say, interestingly, the mouthfeel gets noticeably, I'd say thicker, which is quite strange considering you've actually watered it down a little bit. It's almost as though it's in your mind. It feels creamier in the mouth. And before you've even got air in there to actually experience those flavours, you can already tell that it's going to be very creamy on the palate. And it is. It's creamy. There's a very slight touch of smoke in there. It's now sort of playing a very, very subdued part in the background. Um, I think I've already mentioned there, honey. The honey's in there. You've got a little bit of toffee. We've got some kind of... What is it? It's kind of... Is it cereal? It's, no, it's kind of toast. Not like toast. Maybe honey on toast or something like that. And the finish, unfortunately, suffers for the water being added. It shortens it quite considerably. Let's just try it again just to make sure I'm not going too mental. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of spiciness in there. There's some, there's a nice warming character to it, I'd say, still. But overall, I think it does diminish the, the finish quite a lot. Um, however, I think the whiskey in general does become a lot sweeter uh, for adding water. Very much a drama of two hearts. Really interesting whiskey, I find. Very interesting whiskey indeed. In terms of score, I'm going to give this little dram an 87 out of 100. Uh, I really do like it. I find it quite engaging. I find it very well made, very well structured, very well put together. I think they've used some good casks. Um, and at the end of the day, I think it's just an overall good egg. It's a good release. Quite well priced. He's knocking something else over and destroying it. Excellent. Um, so I encourage you to try it if you can. So thanks so much for watching. See you soon.